like keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. You know what? The 49ers traded up. They did. And they got themselves a running back, which puzzled me at first. <laughs> but it's not because of the player. I actually like the player, Trey Sermon from Ohio State. Good player. Um, interesting selection. It's just outside of the, the Shanahan typical draft mold. Uh, and then their press conference gave a little more insight. And so, Ant, go ahead and break that down for everybody in case they missed the press conference. Right. Yesterday. So, basically, kind of what happened with the whole deal was... They asked uh, uh, kind of about what happened with Ambry Thomas, you know, why they selected him. And it, it seems like they were trying to come up to get Paulson and Debo. And when that didn't pan out, they went into plan B. And plan B knew that they needed to get Thomas and they needed to get the running back that they were targeting, um, which was Trey Sermon. So they went ahead and traded up, got Sermon so they could get Ambry Thomas at 102. That's why they kicked in the trade to get Sermon. So it made it more understandable. Now I understand why they did what they did. They needed to get their guy and then still get the corner. Um, They were afraid he wouldn't make it to their next pick in in the fourth round. So I'm behind it. I do like the size and measurables over, you know, six foot tall, 226 pounds, big physical running back, one cut and and go guy. So he fits Kyle Shanahan's system. And we now have a major red zone threat. Imagine a read option inside the five yard line with this guy and Trey Lance. That's going to be hard to stop because a small linebacker is not going to be able to bring this guy down by himself. And and you have the threat of Trey Lance just putting his shoulder down and plowing it into the end zone <laughs> yes. as well. And you've seen that kid do it a lot. And yes, he's a kid, 21 years old. Trey Sermon as well, coming off the injury. But they obviously feel comfortable with him and where right. he's going to be. Uh, they like, obviously, with the medical set on him, which is good to hear. You like to see that a lot. Um, listen. The big thing with Trey Sermon was, I just didn't understand why you would move up to get a running back. Yep. It's not a Kyle Shanahan move. That's kind of why it threw us off. It just it just seemed out of left field. And then the press conference clears it up and cleans it up. They yeah. were targeting our guy. Yeah. And he said specifically, they had their cornerbacks on the board and then Paulson Adebo. So Paulson Adebo was obviously the guy, the apple of their eye in this draft. Yeah. And unfortunately, the Saints also was the apple <laughs> of their eye as they made sure they snagged him up where they did. And so now you got a situation where... Like you said, plan B came into effect. Okay, well, we have this corner who we're targeting in the fourth. We may not be able to get him when we're going to get him. What can we do? We could take him at 102, right? All right, so let's just come up and get our running back now then. The next guy on our board, we'll grab our next cornerback on the board at 102. And then we'll just have to make do and see what happens in day three. In round four, if there's someone there that we really like and we want to come up and get, or we're going to sit tight and just wait. So they made their move, though. They got their guy. They got Sermon. Threw everybody for a loop a little bit because you could have probably got this guy at 102 seeing as no other running backs went off the board Yeah. After him. Well, yeah, they could have got him at 102, but they wanted to get two guys in that third round, and that's really what you know caused it to happen. So I'm, I'm glad they went ahead and, and made the move and got the guys they wanted. Uh, Ambry Thomas is a good player, too. We'll be talking about him in a future episode. Mm-hmm. But Trey Sermon is going to add to this team because he is a different style of running back because he's the biggest running back on the team now. You know, you have you have Mostert, that's the speed guy. Wilson was your power back, but he's really not that big. And so now you don't have to worry about having a big running back. They have Wayne Gallman, and then they have Jamichael Hasty. Mm-hmm. They have Walter. So they have a very good run back, running back group now. The question is going to be who's going to make this team because that's something else we were discussing is is it going to be Gallman that doesn't make it? Is it going to be Hasty that doesn't make it? Because none of them are going to stick on the practice squad. They're going to go somewhere else because they're very talented. One heck of a running back competition coming in training camp. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um, and Trey Sherm- Sermon is a guy that Kyle Shanahan believes could be a future starting running back in the league and for the 49ers. So obviously... You know, for him, having a, bi- a little bit bigger guy as well, who can be a little bit more physical bruising, sort of like Jeff Wilson has been, is important to him. You've seen what Jeff Wilson can do in the system. Alfred Morris, you've seen what he's been able to yeah. do, especially with Kyle Shanahan. Trey Sermon could be primed for big, big years ahead, but it's going to be years ahead. It's probably not going to be this next year unless something happens to Raheem Mostert. I think he'll get his carries, but I don't he think will. it's going to be the to the you know, level that you would expect. 
10, they're going to bring him 12, along. 10 to 12. Oh, yeah, because they're going to... I mean, Wilson and Mostert are going to carry the load, and then they're going to sprinkle in these other guys. The one thing I want to see Trey Sermon improve on is catching the ball in the backfield. Only 12 receptions last year. So that is Didn't something help. that we want to see. It's not that he can't do it. I just want to see him, you know, get that. Also, the top-end speed. He doesn't have great top-end speed, but his 10-yard split is fantastic. Is. So he's got that explosion, and that's really what it needs. You know, need, you need to get to get past that second level and get positive yards. So it is a nice pick for the 49ers overall. I like the player. Um, now that I understand the trade, I like it even more. And I look forward to seeing what they can do with this guy and how they can develop him and use him. But the 49ers are going all in on a more bruising style of Kyle Shanahan's offense. You get the big guard, you get the big running back, they get the big quarterback. All of a sudden, the 49ers are getting a different identity than what you're used to from them. But now they can do so much more. Once you add Jalen Hurd back to this offense, this off offense is going to be one of the most nastiest offenses in the NFL. That's why all the NFC West is loading up on speed and receivers. They know they got to try to outscore Kyle Shanahan in the future. Good luck. And you got to put up points quick because if this offense is just burly and bruising you, that means they're putting up points, but they're putting up points and eating up six, yeah. seven minutes. So you better put up points quick because if you don't put up points quick and you let the Niners get the ball back, you're in trouble. NFC oh, yeah. West is sweating and you should be. You should be sweating. Let us know what you think about this Trey Sermon pick down below right now in the comment section. Light it up right now, chat. Let us have it. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? After the press conference, was it like us? Did you feel a little bit better and a little more comfortable knowing that the Niners had a plan? Plan didn't go and go the way yep. they wanted to. So right to plan B, get the next two guys that they're targeting. I feel good knowing they did that. Let us know what you think as well. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. That way you're here every time we post for all of this content and so you can participate in these conversations. Yeah, and it's Trey in the Bay times two. 49ers decided to go Trey and double Trey. Tray. Um, so yeah, it's a double Trey in the backfield. This is going to be something fun to watch for years to come. Let us know how excited you are about, about Trey Sermon coming to the 49ers. I want to know what people think. I know a lot of people are high on him. Surprising, yes, but I think we're going to get great potential and great pr uh, production out of him in the future. Absolutely. Stay tuned. We got tons of other breakdowns of these players coming out. You don't want to miss any of this content. And until next time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers way.